Close your eyes, place your hands in your lap, and focus your attention on your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and notice where you feel the breathing process. You may feel it in the chest, you may feel it up in the head. Wherever you notice it, focus your attention there and allow the breathing to reach a rhythm that feels good. It might be shorter than what you've been doing so far, or even deeper, or longer, or more shallow, heavier or lighter, faster or slower. You be the judge as to what feels really best for the body right now. And this way you're developing mindfulness and alertness. The alertness is watching what's going on, and mindfulness is reminding yourself where you want to focus your attention. And if you're alert to the fact that you want it off, you remind yourself you come back. You need these two qualities in order to succeed at any activity in life. And the meditation is a good way of focusing on developing them directly. At the same time, you develop a sense of ease and well-being in the mind. Because it's only when the mind settles down in the present with a sense of ease and well-being that you can really watch it. When it moves away from that sense of well-being, you can ask, where are you going? What are you looking for? This way you learn about the movements of your own mind. We spend so much time learning about the world outside. You can go for years and years and years and getting your schooling. Yet it's, also, it's very easy not to learn anything about yourself in the meantime. Because every, all your attention is focused outside. You're not looking at the processes of the mind. Particularly, you're not seeing where the mind is causing itself suffering. When we focus our attention outside, when there's suffering inside, we tend to blame it on things outside. But as the Buddha pointed out, the main cause of suffering that weighs down the mind is not bad things outside. It's the way the mind interacts with things, how it thinks, how it directs its attention, what intentions it has. And to watch those things, you have to get the mind to settle down in the present moment and not get involved in other things. For the time being right now, you just want to focus right here. You set the intention, you're going to stay with the breath, and then see how long you can maintain that intention and see what other intentions come up to pull you off path. If you can notice that and stay on the path, then you've learned something about the mind. If you wander off, off in line with those other intentions, well, you pull yourself back and start all over again. This way you're developing good qualities in the mind. At the same time, you're learning about the processes of the mind. So you can see more clearly if what the Buddha said was true, that it's our own craving and ignorance that causes us the suffering that really weighs down the mind. He also said it's possible to put an end to that craving and ignorance. That requires a lot of training, but it can be done. It's within the realm of a human mind to do that. So here we're learning about the potentials of the mind its potential to cause suffering, but also its potential to learn how not to cause suffering. These are really important things to learn, because you can go through life studying the, the subjects of the world and never come to an end. But with this you can come to an end. You can come to the end of suffering, which is an important thing to accomplish, because when you're not creating suffering in your own mind, you're a lot less likely to create suffering for other people, too. So it's important that you take time every day to focus on this exercise here for developing mindfulness, developing alertness, developing a sense of well-being in the mind. So you can develop the, the discernment you need in order to understand why you're causing suffering and why you don't have to. And that, as I said, is a topic where you can reach the end, where you can reach completion. There's no other completion in the world.